Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and we are at the Fly Fishing Show right now. As you can see, I have a special guest. We have Mr. Devin Olson of TacticalFlyFisher.com. Devin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tim. You're welcome. It's not Kim, it's Tim. That's it even better Tim. he said yes. it that way. I know it's not Kim. I've known you for a while. I just can't speak right now. That's all right. I, I, too much show talk. You're today. doing great. So what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking Euronymph Strike Detection. This is going to help all of you, especially those of you who love to Euronymph, a.k.a people who follow Devin Olson. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> all right. I'll tell you all about Devin if you don't know in just a little bit, but Devin, let's get right to it. Tip number one. Don't wait to feel the strike. I, I think the least favorite question that I get asked when people are asking me about a new fly rod or at least a euro nipping rod is which one's the most sensitive? And my answer to them is, it shouldn't matter. If you're waiting until you feel the strike, you're missing the bulk of them. Oh, that's a great first tip. And I'll just, I'll jump in. I'll give my own like five cents on this. When I first experimented with European nymphing, I went all in. I was like, I'm going to commit to this. I had a rod, a line, like everything that I felt like was down there. And I felt all of my fish. And I was so impressed. I'm like, this is great. I can feel the fish. I'm catching fish. I was increasing my catch. And I talked to somebody, a friend, I believe it may have been Josh Miller, and I said to him, how many fish do you feel? And his reply was, if you're feeling the fish, you've already missed more than you should. So I love that first time. 100%. Tip. Most of the time, you're also fishing too much weight. If you're having to wait until you feel the strike, the only way you can feel the strike most of the time is to add extra weight so that you get more tension. Many times, you don't need that much weight, or you can't fish that much weight to fish shallower water. With those lighter rigs, you just don't have enough tension to feel. Don't wait until you feel the tape. All we're looking for is really, really fine differences in the way your cider drifts. So if you don't know much about Euronymphing, you're looking at a cider. A cider is just built-in fluorescent monofilament that's already in your leader, and that's typically held off the water, but you can also float it. I'm just looking for any deviation in the drift. As it's drifting along, I'm, I'm basically tracking it with the rod tip, trying to let it go as it wants to most of the time to get a dead drift. If it hesitates just the slightest bit, if there's this, you know, Tiny, tiny little bit of sag or slack in the leader, if that straightens out, that could be a take. If it changes direction, let's say that you've got a nice vertical angle on it, and sometimes it might actually go tilt downstream before it tilts back upstream. You might have a little arc in your tippet below the surface of the water that when that goes tight, it actually changes your angle downstream before it goes back upstream. Any tiny, tiny little you know, hesitation, if it stops, if it jumps, those are obvious ones, but I think the ones that people miss are the slight hesitations or sometimes if their cider jumps down instead of upstream it goes in a direction that you might not think based on where you think your flies are in relation to the cider just look for anything that looks unnatural so that changes let, let me pick your brain on this so imagine we have water coming for, coming towards us so you're fishing upstream mm -hmm. your your drift is coming back towards you how often do you think you make a full drift or are you telling me or you're telling us that you're seeing anything you're seeing any hesitation you're setting the hook, so you rarely get a full drift? That's part of the learning process, obviously. I get full drifts most of the time unless there's a fish or I've ticked bottom. The only thing that I tend to confuse most of the time is a flies have hit bottom and it stops. That looks pretty similar a lot of times to when a fish takes it. But there are sometimes signals uh, in certain water types that one is definitely a tick bottom or definitely a fish. And also, if you've ticked bottom repeatedly, in the same spot because there's a rock there or something, then you should probably learn that, oh, if it happens there again, I can let it keep going or I can lift it and, and let the drift keep going. But at least the first time through, if you haven't um, set up your drift repeatedly through there yet, hits bottom, I'm probably going to set the hook. I'm normally only trying to do that every you know, four to five drifts through a spot. That sounds great. The only other comment that I'll give with my own personal experience as European nymphing is that I at first look for the sag in my cider mm -hmm. and I wanted to see that straightened. And now I'm to the point where I'm looking where my line, where my tippet goes into the water. And if mm -hmm. I see any deviation of that, especially just an angle shift, mm -hmm. I'm on it immediately. Love mm -hmm. this. I love the second one. And by the way, let's pause for a second. Let's, let's introduce Devin Olson. Devin's been fly fishing for, I'm sure, as long as I have, probably longer. Who knows? He's been out there for a long time, but he's definitely known in the competitive fly fishing world. I know, Devin, you're on Fly Fishing Team USA, one of the, the top members you know, of that team easily one of the top fly fishers in the world. You want to tell us a little bit, just the background? I have been competing for a long time. I think this is my 15th year with Team USA. Wow. 
Uh, it'll be my 12th world championship in Spain this year. Um, have a, an individual medal, and we have a few team medals and lots of you know, top 10 and top 15 finishes individually as well. So I've been around for a while, um, and I really do enjoy the co uh, competitive scene. I also have a background in fisheries biology. That's what I got my master's degree in, and I was a biologist uh, in the biology world at least for seven years and was a biologist for several years after my, I got my master's degree. But then I started a little thing called tacticalflyfisher.com, and it was pretty small for about a year. And then we released a video called Modern Nymphing, and overnight I basically had two full-time jobs. And so... I had to decide what to do. So I quit my day job as a biologist, and now I just run tacticalflyfisher.com full-time, and we're an online fly shop for... Okay, so if you want to contact Devin, we'll get a link to Tactical Fly Fisher in the description. By the way, pause right now, like this video, then go down into the description. He has a YouTube channel as well, full of information. You'll have way, way more information there. All right, last but not least, tip number three. So tip number three, if you're still having problems detecting strikes, but you've mastered some Euronymph casting. The last thing you can do is really decrease the diameter of your leader because the less sag you can have in that leader, the more sensitivity you get out of it. A lot of folks uh, these days fish what I kind of refer to as a micro thin leader. And a micro thin leader is just a Euronymph leader that you've now taken the butt section that used to be something like 15 or 20 pound test uh, Maxima Chameleon or, or you know something of that uh, thickness. And now that butt section is 4X. So it's only you know seven thousandths of an inch thick, and normally you can use all cider for that portion of the leader as well. So you get almost a direct inline connection to your flies. It's the only time when you might actually feel strikes and see them yep. simultaneously because there's so much less sag that positivity and the sensitivity of the leader increases. Because of that direct connection. Because back, of the yeah. direct connection and the decreased sag that you get from that thinner leader. And we'll warn you, this is where we say pause, it's tough to cast that. I can yes. tell you, my, my wife, Heather, she loves the Euronymph, and it was tough for her to go from like a modular style leader mm -hmm. to that micro thin leader. She tried it on one of my rigs, and she was very happy to hand it back and go back to yep. her traditional Euro leader. So try it out. It may not be for everyone, but I'm hearing the tip. Decrease your line size. You will have a better chance of detecting these strikes. Yeah, and you don't have to go to the micro thin leader immediately. In fact, I tell you, don't, all right? Wherever you're at now, step it down. One size for the butt section and, and maybe your cider. And then get used to that, step it down one more. Just go through an iterative process that eventually, I can cast a micro leader every bit as accurately as I can uh, a traditional, you know, thicker Euro leader, but it took me a long time to get there. I had to dedicate months of working I'm with sure. it I'm um, sure. to get there. And, and there's ways of doing that, which I have some videos that assist you in that endeavor. Okay. We'll include those videos down below. All right, listen, I asked Devin for three tips. You got three great ones from him. Devin, thank you so much yep. for coming on the show. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, all of you, for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. You can also email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. Tactical Fly Fisher, great website. Check it out. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.